It was a very specific kind of field work that we did this year. It was the first time ever that a team tried to drill through the entire Greenland ice sheet and reach bedrock and sample the bedrock. So the prime samples of interest for us were actually the bedrock underneath the ice. Retreating ice is very visible. So you see that and that's happening all the time. It's also um, tremendous in Greenland. We were in Northwest Greenland last year, which is supposed to be the most stable spot, um, part of one of the most stable part of the Greenland ice sheet. But even there in August, there are basically streams of melted water coming all over the ice sheet. It's not only one or two, it's kind of just everywhere. Um, which is kind of shocking. You also hear the ice sheet cracking when it's getting hot, which is actually creepy and scary if you're not used to that. So they're kind of really loud bangs, which I at the beginning can what is this? So but so the ice sheet is mounting under the heat. Um, so there are clear, clear signs of change. There are the satellite measurements who kind of monitor over the ice sheet the areas where there's melt and we had now several years where the entire Greenland ice sheet and the middle is middle of the Greenland ice sheet is 3,000 meters high but even there there was some melt which is unheard of so the kind of to think that that entire ice cap has surface melt in summer is kind of and that's very recent it's very scary but the arctic changes it's another reason by the way why polar science is so important that the warming in the Arctic is factor is several as a factor of two to three to four faster than the average. So it has to do with this polar amplification effect. Um, it has to do with the sea ice, but the change in the Arctic is the fastest on the globe. And so we have to really, that's a time scale question. We have to understand this faster because it's, the, the impact is so dramatic. It is a really strange situation because in the moment we are at a point geochemistry wise and with our cosmogenic methods that we can contribute extremely important direct data that no other method about ice sheet vulnerability and ice sheet um, change that no other method can provide and help the modelers a lot. So it's no question that it, I think that this is really, really important. Simultaneously, I'm always almost scared by now to get data back in envisioning that it makes the situation again worse than we thought, which is childish, of course. Like, but that, that is one um, motivation. The other one, motivation is that there is by now, um, in our group at least, there are enough junior people who are really interested in the field and actually stay, seem to stay in the academic field, which is also very um, motivating, kind of just seeing them evolve during the PhD and getting more and more in, into that, that field. Um, and then eventually, in some cases, even deciding to stay in this career. Um, that is so supporting the, the next generation, certainly. Um, also, the older I get, it gets more and more important.